Hello and welcome to this video series on the Roland Juno 106. So firstly we're going to deal with this DCO, it stands for Digitally Controlled Oscillator and it's the heart of the synth, it's where it makes it sound. So the synth has four primary oscillators, a pulse width, a pulse wave, uh, a triangle, um, a pulse sub and a noise generator. So at the moment this sound that it's making here is predominantly made with the pulse, take that away. We've just got the sub left, take that away. We've got nothing left. Bring the, the deep tone back in. Bring the main pulse sound back in. Okay, and that's the essential character of the synth is generated with those four oscillators. Now the uh, pulse wave oscillator is itself controlled by some switches and knobs over here. So let's look at this PWM slider. What's this? At the moment it's set to man or manual. And that basically means that this slider is determining the width of the pulse wave. Now let's not get too carried away with sonics. That's another subject for another time. There's plenty of information out there. But essentially a pulse wave um, is imagine a square wave um, so that all of your lines are straight lines and the, the, the thing that's traditionally called a square wave um, is square by virtue of the fact that it's symmetrical that all of the widths of all of the waves are the same everything that isn't symmetrical is um, a non-square pulse wave and as we go through this slider All the different sounds that you get out of different shapes of pulse wave. So in manual mode the pulse width modulation, the slider that changes the width of the, um, the, the pulse wave, generates all those different sounds. Okay great. So that's when it's in manual mode. Every other mode um, is dealing with this slider is it will be dealing with modulation. So if we put it in LFO mode and play something now the the width of the wave is being changed at this rate. See that red light that's coming on and off? Listen to the waves, the pulses. Okay, so that's the LFO is being routed to the width modulator of the pulse wave and it's changing the width of the pulse wave that, that often. It's like I turn it into manual and go That's what it's doing. Just faster. If I put it on either of the E1 settings, E1 plus, E1 minus, it routes the, the, the appropriate envelope, either envelope one or envelope two, to the pulse width modulation. And now it will draw this curve, no attack, fair bit of decay, that level of sustain, and a little bit of release. So it colours the sound by altering the pulse width according to the shape of the envelope. Change the envelope, get a different sound. So that's E1 and then E2 is exactly the same but it deals with envelope 2. So it's harsh on, harsh off because we've got no attack, no decay, all the sustain and no release. Okay, so that's all the different settings for the DCO, for the pulse width modulation of the DCO. 
set it back to manual. So now it's going to be a static width at maximum volume. This slider here is the pulse width. The pulse width um, wave uh, volume level. Okay. Then we have a sawtooth wave. Turn this one off. There it is. Okay. Adding extra flavour to the sound. This is the sub. Nice and deep. And then this is just noise. Okay. And finally we have range, which is just basically the pitch of the tone. Turn this noise off. Right down as low as you can possibly get. So that's the digitally controlled oscillator of the Roland Juno 106. A four part oscillator generating four different sounds uh, within the, the synth per voice. Uh, join me next time and we'll carry on diving into this incredible instrument. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.